Welcome to Zero to Fight Stick. This is episode two, unpacking the case. Yeah, I know, another internet unboxing video. Well, I went with the AFS 18 inch case for my build and pretty much some of this stuff is going to apply to your build as well if you're following along for that intents and purposes. Uh, so we'll get started taking off this fine bubble wrap and getting to the case underneath. Now you want to be careful, of course, with any un bubble wrapping as it's incredibly easy to get distracted and push every bubble in. But on a more serious note, you do want to save some layers of bubble wrap. In my previous build, it was really helpful to just have a layer underneath <clears throat> to keep the uh, top surface safe while we're working on the under belly of things. So I'm going to hit... There's no real magic to this. Just get in there, find the tape spots, and peel them off. I know in episode one you saw a completed blue stick. This is my red one that we'll be building. And this has what they call a three and in three configuration in the back. So that's why we'll be putting some pass-through connectors as well as some option buttons. And I also went for three whole sides as soon as you can see that. And we'll get to what that is in a minute. All right. So this is an extended Sega 2P layout. A lot of fight sticks use the Vulix layout or the Noir layout. Those are probably the most popular. Uh, with AFS, you can get a ton of different layouts, including stickless builds like Hitbox or Mixbox. So if you like those options, those are available on AFS. I'm not being sponsored by them. I just like their product. Anyway. What we're going to do, now that we've got this unwrapped, is we want to get this nice plexiglass off. And the tools we're going to need past this point, really just some good fingernails, which I don't have. So the difficulty in this might be a little higher for me, as well as some hex bits, or you can use, I believe, a T10. So let's get, I'll get started on that in this next segment. Okay, well, here we go. So what you're going to need, besides the case, is you're going to want a mini screwdriver. They do include Allen keys with this. Um, of course, depending on your manufacturer, you may or may not have that. For this case, this is a H2.0, and you also need an H2.5. The 2.0 is going to be used on the back. That's a hex bit. Uh, if you don't have hex bits, that's fine. If you have, oops, Torx bits, you can use a T10 and a T8. T10 on the front, T8 on the back. All right, so let's get going. What we want to do is because I have Plexi, we need to peel this plastic coat off. These screws also hold down your button panel, so it goes right through the plexi and the top metal button panel. And if you get art, that's going to go underneath your plexi, of course. Now, I do recommend that you have a little jar or something to place your screws in. That just makes life easier. For now, though, I'm not going to do that. All right, so now you can see a nice powder-coated button panel. That's where we'll be screen buttons in, and we have the optics. All right, let's set this aside, and we'll switch things up. Let 
these do get a little loose once you start taking those panels off, so be careful. And these are only tightened a little bit. So we need this first start with a PH2 Phillips screwdriver. Yours may arrive pretty easy to take off. That may be difficult to take off. Can't tell you. Nothing too exciting here. This is all very easy stuff. All right, now we can ply this off. And we're ready to start removing these inset screws. I know there's a better term. I'm forgetting it right now. And that's your first gotcha. You don't want to just put a screwdriver in there. You've got to hold this nut in and then ply it out. Unfortunately, you have to do this for a lot of screws. I'll see you in a minute. done. Just one last one. Now at AFS you can get a ton of different configurational options like I mentioned. You can get a solid body backing. This is a flexi one. So we're going to set that aside. And you can get different sides. I went with the three hole sides. You can get ones with lockout sides. Uh, you can get ones with Four holes, one hole, two holes, whatever. Um, and I believe they'll customize them for your additional fee. Just looking in this right now, I want to show you some of the features. The first is these top row. They call this a 3, 3N, 3. So we have three bu normal 24 millimeter buttons. These are going to be your option buttons. And we have three Nutrick ports. These are about 20 millimeters. And some people like wiring switches in here. I have use for all three of these as Nutrick ports. We're going to have two USB and one RJ45. And finally, another three option buttons, 24 millimeter, pretty standard. Um, on our side here, we've got three holes, just like we showed you before, 24 millimeter for options. Um, one of these sides is going to be all switches. Most switches are 20 millimeter. We'll talk about that later. And the other side is going to be a couple of other option buttons that are kind of special. We're going to be using turbo and a mode button for the Paradise Magenic Arcade Stick. All right. You also notice down here is a joystick mount. There's a few different holes, so if your application takes a little bit different spacing, you can modify it accordingly. And there's also a PCB mount board. This is only in the classic art uh, case series. I don't believe it's in the universal. You have to use the adhesive uh, feet or some other solution. So there's that. I'll see you in a minute. I'm going to peel some plexiglass stuff. Okay, so I've managed to get the sticky backing a little bit peeled off. What you want to do is just work a fingernail under there. I don't recommend using a knife. If you have a specialized tool for it, hey, great. I don't. I uh, don't. I wouldn't use a screwdriver or anything like that, like a flat edge or something, because you're just going to scratch your plexi. Especially with the front, front panel, you're going to have some tearing as you come around the buttons. Just w try and work it down a little piece at a time. Go slow. Take your time. And that way it's not going to rip and tear and make, become even more of a nuisance because it, it can be a real pain to get these started sometimes. Other than that, once you've got, once I've got this, I'm just going to bolt it back in after cleaning it up a little bit. I don't want my fingerprints stuck in there there forever. And then we'll be good to go and we'll be ready for our next episode, which is installing the new trick ports, which is our pass-throughs that let us connect our printed circuit boards are the brains of our controller and that way we don't have to leave a cable there all the time. We can detach it, we can walk away, and we're good. And that way 
you know, something gets ripped, torn, it's not going to, it'll maybe destroy this $11 thing instead of a $100 thing, which is always nice. So I'll see you then. Okay, just a little follow up. Replace the plexi on the back panel and given a little cleanup. You can use just a couple of washcloths with a little water and it does the job pretty well. Uh, for the screws, you might want to try leaving one edge off and then inserting the screw from the underside and tightening the nut down. I just did finger tight, that seemed to be pretty good. If you want to get into some more serious business, you can put on a nut driver on your screwdriver and really ratchet those down. But don't tighten too much, you don't want to crack that plexi. It's not as strong as metal, funny enough. Otherwise, if you have a pair of rubber gloves, you might want to consider using that before you start taking off that uh, backing and you'll save yourself a little bit on the cleaning. But, you know, it might be good just to wipe it down, be sure. Anyway, hope that helps you.